the only astrology video you'll ever need. Clickbait title, of course. A subscriber requested I do an astrology video because I talk about astrology so much in my pick a card readings. And people don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Mercury conjunct Mercury. What's that? I'm not going to get that deep into astrology in this video. The only astrology video you'll ever need. I'm going to use really broad strokes. I'm going to say what I have to say. I'm going to get my little point across and then call it a day. Because I've been at this for over an hour doing take after take after take. I go down this rabbit hole. I take this tangent. I go here. I go there. And it's just, I've got stuff to do. I have a few videos at this channel on astrology. I guess they're hard to find. I don't know. I've not done an astrology video in a while. I have several astrology videos at Patreon. Um, I've not updated my Patreon in a while. It's been a couple of weeks, maybe. Um, it's like I've said recently at Patreon. I've lost a few patrons lately. I was really excited there for a while because I was getting a new patron, it seemed like every week. I had a pretty good number, a decent number of patrons, and they started just dropping like flies. And I said, you know what? I'm trying to do so many things. I'm just going to drop this. And when I get down to zero patrons, I'll change the whole structure, but I'm not going to just tear my Patreon down. I've worked too hard. I've got too many videos up there. So I'm not going to do uh, a weekly video or whatever for Patreon. I'm not going to commit to that. I'm just, I'm not, I've burned myself out, but I love astrology. So I talk about it. I am not an expert astrologer. I'm not a certified astrologer. I am a lifelong student of astrology and I'm lazy I'm very lazy when it comes to this. I only look at Western astrology, tropical. I use the equal house system. I go to astro.com. Um, Placidus is the default. I use equal because I was part of this astrology forum online a few years ago. And the woman who runs that forum, she swore by equal. And I found validity in that. Um, 2014 is when I got really into astrology. I mean, I found Linda Goodman as a teenager in the 80s. I read Sun Signs, Love Signs, Star Signs, but I got into orbs and all of that in 2014 because I could not let my Capricorn ex go. I was obsessed and I said, okay, I got to figure this shit out. Why does this man have so much power over me? What the fuck is going on? I really wanted to figure stuff out because... At the time, 2014, my heart was set on finally getting it right with the man. What do I need to find in a man to make this work? I've given up, just being real, uh, being honest, being authentic, being transparent. I've given up. Uh, I'm doing what's immediately in front of me. I'm living my life. I'm brushing and flossing my teeth. I'm doing Sarin Tarot. I'm doing Extra Basic Tarot. I'm doing Patreon. I'm getting into noise. I'm obsessed with Audacity and FL Studio. I do art. I've got over 2,300 designs uploaded to Redbubble. Um, I keep forgetting to get on the yoga mat, but I'm just trying to live my little life. Married and divorced twice lived with five different men, but maybe my knowledge will help people who still have hope in their heart that they can get it right with someone. Okay. <laughs> so I've done some videos talking about what I think is the most important. Okay. I'm not going to talk about the 12 signs and the fire and the earth and the elements and the modalities and all that. You can find that in other videos. There are all kinds of astrology books, 
I'm not getting into all of that. Just for my purposes, you know, I'm talking about what I deem important and sinistry. So the aspects in Western astrology, conjunction, opposition, trine, square, quintile, biquintile, sextile, sesquiquadrate, it's a mouthful, semi-square, semi-sextile, quincunx, or the inconjunct. I only fuck with or really look at the conjunction, the opposition, the trine, the square, sextile, which I find to be very mediocre. I would say sextile is the most mediocre aspect. And semi-sextile, you want to avoid that at all costs. Um, now, sun, semi-sextile sun, big deal. You see it. You see people that get married. A Virgo marries a Libra. It works. I'm talking about the moon sign. I don't look at sun sign sinistry. And that's really controversial. I don't look at sun sign sinistry. I don't look at Chiron, Juno, any of the asteroids. Um, when I'm reading charts for clients, I look at the luminaries, the sun and the moon, the personal planets, Venus, Mars, Mercury, the chart ruler and its tightest aspect. I look at the north node and the south node. Okay. And if the client has a request, I want you to look at this thing between me and this person and the sinistry, whatever. Of course, I honor that request, but of my own volition, um, the hill that I will die on when you're looking at gold standard sinistry, you want to look at the moon, Mercury, chart ruler, tightest aspect. You can fuck with north and south node if you want to be extra. What I call mirror aspects. I've not seen any other astrologer. I'm not an astrologer. I'm a student, but I've not seen any astrologer talk about this. I've not read it in any book. What is a mirror aspect? Okay, here's an example. I have Mars square Pluto, one of the worst aspects you can have in your natal chart. If you've got Mars square Pluto and it's tight, I've got Mars at four Capricorn square Pluto, three Libra. Uh, bottom line, you're going to have to become adept at shadow work. You're going to have some shit to work out with Mars square Pluto. Anger issues, uh, jealousy, envy. You'll probably struggle with social media if you've got Mars square Pluto. I know that I've struggled with it. I continue to struggle. I do YouTube and that's it. That's enough. I was back at Twitter X briefly. I got banned because I was shit posting. I was posting all these links to all my videos. I've got so many YouTube channels. It's it's crazy. I've been manic just doing these noise videos at Chupacabra Cinema, Cougar Ketchup, etc., etc., etc. I'm in bed, crossing my legs. Okay, I got these crystals in the mail today from Etsy. I just ordered one. It's a palm crystal. Uh, got it for pick-a-card purposes. It's reddish-brown, and I forget what the hell it's called. And the seller sent me five complimentary crystals and they're really gorgeous so i need to take a picture of those for etsy and give a five star review okay why is the moon important well the moon is our pain body it's our feelings our emotions our daily habits and routines you don't talking ideal here you don't want to fuck with someone whose moon is semi-sextile your moon just going from my own life, my own experience, that's all I can really go by. Um, my two ex-husbands, their moons are semi-sextile my moon. My moon is in Virgo. First husband, his moon's in Libra. Libra is semi-sextile Virgo. Second, my son's father, Leo. Leo, semi-sextile Virgo. So there's just kind of this, this awkwardness and this, eh, this mediocrity with moon, semi-sextile moon. My Virgo moon is a pain in the ass. Uh, not one of the best moon placements you can have. I am a weird introvert. I can't do Zoom meetings. I can't do live streams. Um, <clears throat> I'm very particular about my daily habits and routines. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. 
sometimes I swish coconut oil around in my mouth. I don't like loud noises. I don't like animals. I've not had a pet since I was a kid. Um, the neighbors next door with their pit bull that's always barking. I just, I get irritated. Um, I make a lot of noise blocker videos for other channels. I make a lot of ASMR-ish videos, rain sounds, etc., affirmations, etc. Anyway, um, I'm very sensitive to odors. So I've got a weird, neurotic, introverted, picky as hell moon, and it's in the first house. So I take my stuff very seriously. I take my emotions seriously. Um, to the point of being childish at times, you know, if I'm hungry or I've not gotten my sleep, oh my God, God help whoever's around me. I got to have the food that I want when I want it and I got to have my sleep. So the Leo X, his moon is in Leo. He has sun and moon in Leo and his moon is very messy happy, loud, what the fuck ever, you know, he goes to sleep with the television on in his room. We have separate rooms. We've been in a platonic partnership for a few years. I've talked about it numerous times. When we were actually married years ago, it got to the point in our marriage where we had separate bedrooms because he snores and he goes to sleep with the TV on and I'm an anti-TV person. Yeah, I've got my computer. I watch YouTube, but I'm an anti-TV person. Um, when he's making breakfast on Sundays, he likes to blast the music. And if it were up to him, he would keep the music going while we were eating. And I'm just, I'm very finicky. So, Moon, semi-sextile moon, I would say. In my experience, it doesn't work. Um, now, the first husband, who's moon in Libra, semi-sextile moon in Virgo, we took this road trip once from Albuquerque, where we were living. We lived in Albuquerque. This road trip from Albuquerque, New Mexico, to Taos. I forget how many hours it is from Albuquerque to Taos. Who cares? It's a road trip for that entire road trip. There was no conversation. It was painful. His books embarrassed me. We were going to have friends over. And his books were displayed in the den. Mine were in the bedroom. I said, can we swap out? Let's put my books in the den and yours in the bedroom. Because I don't want them to think that I read these books. <laughs> if you've seen Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry David. Okay, Larry David is my spirit animal. He's my twin flame. He's, he's me. If I were a Jewish man, I would be Larry David and curb your enthusiasm. Anyway, um, look at the moon. The moon's pretty damn important. Look at Mercury, communication, sense of humor. To me, it doesn't get any funnier than curb your enthusiasm. Um, I've watched Rick and Morty with my son, I'm not really a Rick and Morty kind of person. I was never into The Simpsons. I never could understand why The Simpsons was such a big deal. Not my kind of humor. Uh, anything with Adam Sandler, I'm not going to laugh. Um, my sense of humor, what I find hilarious is a lot of stuff that I see at YouTube, but it's unintentional. People are being serious, but they're cracking me up. Or the comments that I read at different channels. I crack up over YouTube comments, especially if they're grammatically incorrect or misspelled. I don't know. It's the Virgo in me. What can I say? Virgo rising, Virgo moon, Saturn, Venus, and Aquarius in the sixth house, the house of Virgo. Okay, so Mercury, yeah, that's important. Sense of humor, how you communicate. Um, I'm a sapiosexual. I fall in love with minds. You can put all my exes in a lineup and... People are like, what the fuck? Does she have a type? She's all over the place. I don't really have a type, but I cannot be with a man for any length of time who doesn't have intellectual curiosity, who doesn't like to read, who doesn't like to have in-depth conversations. That's just, no, that's not going to work. So <clears throat> chart ruler in its tightest aspect, I've got Virgo rising. 
which means Mercury is my chart ruler because Mercury rules Virgo. My Mercury in Pisces, 14 Pisces, 7th house, house of Libra. It makes a tight square to my Saturn, 13 Gemini, 10th house, house of Capricorn. I take communication seriously. Um, I get turned off by sloppy, half-assed, vague communication. Uh, I can't tolerate lies, liars, uh, people who don't have integrity with their word flakes. No, that's, that's not going to work with me. So yeah, uh, someone who has Mercury at say 20 Sagittarius in the first house, the house of Aries, and maybe their Mercury is, um, conjunct Jupiter. Okay. We're not going to be able to tolerate each other. We're not going to be able to be in a romantic sexual relationship. Definitely. It just, it wouldn't work. Um, so with my Capricorn X, we had Mercury square Mercury, not by aspect, but by sign his Mercury, I think the late degrees Sagittarius in the second, the house of Taurus and my Mercury 14 Pisces in the seventh. So yeah, we fought constantly and we just didn't understand each other. We did have moon tried moon, his mind, in, his moon in Taurus trines my moon in Virgo, but it wasn't enough. So I wrote down the synastry, uh, the basics for Suzanne Summers and Alan Hamill, because apparently they had a very happy, successful marriage. He wrote her a beautiful love poem hours before she died. And I cried when I heard about it. People who don't know would say, oh, well, Suzanne Summers was a Libra. How did that work? Alan Hamill is a cancer. Well, you don't look at the sun sign for starters. Um, her moon, 17 Cancer, was conjunct Alan's son, 8 Cancer. Her moon, 17 Cancer, was trying Alan's moon, 21 Scorpio. That's pretty significant. Okay. Um, and they had Saturn aspects. For longevity, you got to look at Saturn. Okay, so mirror aspects. I don't think I've talked about this. I've done so many takes. I don't know what I've said at this point. Mirror aspects. Did I say this? I've got Mars square Pluto. A lot of my exes, not the Leo, not my first husband, but uh, the Capricorn, another Leo, the man who inspired my novel Bullshit Rodeo, da, 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 the Gemini met at OK Cupid. They had Mars square Pluto. It doesn't matter what sign it's in, just having that aspect, Mars square Pluto. That means you're going to resonate with each other and it's going to be intense. Um, if you've got a lot of squares and oppositions in your chart, you're not going to be able to really understand or fuck with someone who has a lot of trines and sextiles because being glib here, but across the board, I would say if someone has a lot of trines and sextiles in their natal chart, they've probably had a pretty easy happy-go-lucky life, not a lot of struggle. And someone like me who has a lot of squares and oppositions, I'm going to look at someone who has trines and sextiles and think, okay, good for you, but I can't really relate to that. That doesn't resonate with me because I've known a lot of struggle in my life. Um, I'm tough. I've got a lot of grit. I've got a very thick skin because of things I've been through. And that's why I'm sure I come across as harsh, brutal, rude to many people in the tarot community because I don't do the sugarcoating and the fluff. Now, someone who has a lot of trines and sextiles, that's probably someone who's going to be very sweet and congenial in their delivery and maybe they'll read a lot of oracle cards i don't know uh, but i'm not an oracle card kind of person i've got a mutable grand cross in my chart and i've got mars square pluto so that's what i have i may delete this so if you're watching this video if you're listening to this video god wants you to receive this message peace out